Good morning and welcome to All Saints Church in St. Andrews on this the 19th Sunday after Trinity. God is love and he that abideth in love abideth in God and God in him. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness that the whole earth stand in awe of him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Please join me in an opening prayer. O oh, God, Give thy people, people grace, grace to use the right thy holy, holy day, day, that it may be a day of mercy to the heavy laden, a day of resurrection to newness of life, life, a day, a day to, to worship thee in the fellowship of the faithful. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have erred and strayed from, from thy ways like lost sheep, sheep. We, we have, have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus, you our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And, and our mouth, mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. O come, let us worship. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved for that generation and said, It is the people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Cheryl Hooper will now read the first lesson. The first lesson is written in the Epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart. 
who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning your former manner of life the old manhood, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new manhood, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and yet sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no evil speech proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Here ends the first lesson. Please join me in the appointed Psalm, Psalm 146. We'll read responsively by the half verse. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Yea, as long as I have any being, I will sing praises unto my God. O put not your trust in princes, nor in any child of man. For there is no help in them. For when the breath of man goeth forth, he shall turn again to his earth. And, and then all his thoughts perish. Blessed is he that hath God, uh, the God of Jacob for his help. And, and whose hope is in the Lord, Lord his God. God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is. Who keepeth his promise forever. Who helpeth them to right the suffer wrong. Who feedeth, who feedeth the, the hungry. hungry. The Lord looseth men out of prison. The Lord, the Lord giveth sight, sight to the blind. blind. The Lord raiseth up them that are fallen. The, the Lord, Lord loveth, loveth the righteous. righteous. The Lord careth for the strangers. He upholdeth the fatherless and widow. As, As for the way of the ungodly, he turneth it upside down. The Lord thy God, O Zion, shall be king forevermore. And, and throughout, throughout all generations. generations. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and now and ever shall, shall be, be. World, world without end. end. Amen. Amen. Linda Walsh will now read the second lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blas blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power unto men. Here ends the second lesson. We confess our faith in the triune God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, for as much as without thee we are not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sermon today will be preached by the Reverend Jim Crichton. In the gospel lesson this morning, a man is brought to Jesus on his bed. The man is paralyzed. In the uh, accounts of this story in Mark and the Gospel of Luke, uh, we're told that um, the room where Jesus is standing is so packed that they have to break open the roof and lower the man down to him. Uh, Matthew leaves that part of the story out, but everything else is very much the same in all three Gospels. And the first thing Jesus says to this man, who, remember, is totally paralyzed, he says, take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven you. Imagine going to the doctor or going to the hospital with a broken leg and the, doctor, the first thing the doctor says to you when, he event when you eventually get to see him is, take heart, my friend, uh, your sins are forgiven you. I mean, you would say, are you joking? The most important thing for me right now is to be healed. Not as, uh, issues of religion and, uh, or spirituality, that kind of thing we can discuss later, but first, mend my broken leg. But Jesus here is saying that the most important thing is life is not your, the, the state of your health. The most important thing is your relationship with God and are you in a right relationship with God? And he declares to this man, he says, take heart, your sins are forgiven you. Um, that's not to say that the physical side of life is unimportant. Um, Jesus eventually heals this man uh, of his paralysis. We also know that elsewhere in Scripture that uh, the physical, we are created, body and soul. Uh, we are told that uh, in the New Jerusalem, we're not going to float around as disembodied spirits. We will actually walk the streets of the New Jerusalem. But Jesus is saying that, the, the most, that there is something in this life that is so important that if we are not connected to it, we will not live life well. Um, God is totally free, and he created us to be free as well. We sometimes, and uh, we are to be, we are, we are as free, he created us to be as free as the birds of the air. But you remember that the freedom of the birds of the air, in order for them to be free, they have to obey the laws of aerodynamics. And we are free too, we are created for freedom. 
But there are rules to this freedom, and if we don't obey those rules, we crash and burn, just as birds do if they don't obey the laws of aerodynamics. And so what Jesus is saying is that we have to be connected to this thing which is so important. Uh, in Isaiah, we read these words, that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The essence of sin is not sinful acts, terrible things that people might do. The essence of sin is turning away from God. And it's because we turn away from God that we do the terrible, that people do the terrible things that they do. If you want to sing at the, at the end, if, if in, according to the scripture, you know, if you, uh, if you uh, want to sing at the end of your life with Sinatra that you have done it your way, the scriptures say, well, that will be your, your fate. You will continue to do live in a world or in a state where that's all that you could do is live your way along with everybody else who is living their way. Uh, you will be cut off from the source of God, from the source of all goodness, who is God. But the good news of the gospel is that Jesus Christ has come into the world to restore us to that life of freedom. And this is more important than health. Uh, all of us will one day get sick and die. This young man, that, pe that this man rather that uh, Jesus has healed, will eventually get sick again and die. And when it comes to the end of our lives, when we come to that point of departure from this life, will we not all want to hear Jesus say to us, take heart, my friend, your sins are forgiven you. Now, my other reaction, the second reaction to this uh, story is also has to do with Jesus saying, your sins are forgiven you. Because Jesus says your sins are forgiven and there's no act of contrition on, on the part of this man, is there? He simply says to him as soon as he sees him, your sins are forgiven you. And you sort of wonder about that. Surely elsewhere in scripture it talks about the need to repent. We say in the uh, prayer book, uh, every, on the book of morning prayer, uh, in, in the, uh, the service of morning prayer, uh, uh, when it comes to the time of confession, uh, that God does not desire the death of a sinner, but that he should turn from his wickedness and repent. And uh, this is based on the teaching, well, things that we find in uh, the book of the prophet Ezekiel. So how do we explain this situation? Well, if you read on in this story, we read that Jesus can discern the thoughts of the uh, people who are listening to him. And I, it is assumed that Jesus somewhere sees in this man some spark, some desire for mercy. And he responds, it doesn't matter that it's inarticulate or unexpressed, Jesus responds to that desire within him. Um, you know, in, the, in the, the scriptures it says, well, God is not like us. Let me put it that way. Um, you know how it is sometimes with our children, we say, uh, you must ask for things politely and nicely and that kind of thing. God is not like that. Uh, in Isaiah, it describes the coming Messiah. It says, a bruised reed he will not break, and, sm uh, and, and, and smoking flax he will not quench. Uh, also, if you think of the story of the prodigal son, um, when the son returns home, the father, he says, when he sees him afar off, rushes to the son, and before the son can get out his... His, uh, his words of sorrow for his waywardness. The father is smothering him with expressions of love and kindness. And our heavenly father is like that and invites us to turn to him. And the third reaction that I have to this story, uh, it's uh, in regards to the teachers of the law who are, uh, uh, are, are sitting there observing Jesus. And when they hear him say, your sins are forgiven you, they say to him, they say in their minds anyway, this is blasphemy. Who is this to forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus, we're told, discerning their thoughts says, uh, says to, to them, which is easier, 
to forgive sins or to say to this man, rise up and walk? Now, if you pose that question, we say, surely it's easier to forgive sins, is it not? But here's something about sin. It's costly. Forgiveness is costly. If you come to my house and break something and then say, please forgive me, then I bear the cost of repairing that damage. If you slander me and then say, forgive me, then I bear the cost of losing my good name. Sin costs. And Jesus, because he is sinless, is able to pay the cost by giving his life so that we might have, might, so that our sins might be forgiven, so that uh, that cost might be borne. He bears it himself. Um, there's a there's a wonderful sort of old story. It's a, uh, sort of like a fairy story, um, um, a, almost a Cinderella story. That it, it's called the Black Bull of Norway, and there are various versions of it. There's a Scottish version and an Irish version, and they all vary in some degree. But essentially, the story concerns a knight who kills somebody in battle, but has tremendous res remorse over over it, and that remorse is. Is, is indicated by a stain, a blood stain on his tunic that he cannot wash out. And the re legend is that anyone who can wash out that stain will become the bride of the night. Now there's a witch with three daughters and they all try to wash out the stain and they fail. But at night uh, a, a serving girl comes along and she sees the pile of laundry and she washes everything and out comes the stain. And the wicked witch, of course, tries to suggest that it was her elder daughter who washed out the stain. Uh, but anything, you know, in this, as the story goes, everything comes out right at the end. But the point is, you know, uh, that only an innocent one can sort of wash out that stain. It is only Jesus who can take away the stain of the guilt of our sin. Uh, in Malachi, uh, for example, he talks about the coming Messiah and he says he shall be like a refiner's fire and full of soap. He will purify the people. And it's, it's Christ that purifies us and washes us and makes us clean. And he is, you know, as in that story of the Black Bull of Norway, the person who washes out that stain is the true love, the night's true love. And Christ is is our true love, the one who loves us more than anything and is prepared to do all he can for us. And he calls us to put our trust in him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, hear our prayer. We come humbly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, who in loving kindness provided a ransom for our souls, we pray for the world created through your love, for its nations and governments, especially for those who are in positions of trust and authority over us. Charles, our King, Mary, our Governor General, Brenda, our Lieutenant Governor, Justin, our Prime Minister, Blaine, our Premier, John, our MP, Kathy, our MLA, Brad, our mayor, and all who work with them for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Son, incarnate word, our prophet, priest, and king, we pray for the church created for your glory, for its ministry, that it may reflect your love. We pray for all who minister, both lay and ordained, especially for David, our archbishop, and for the clergy and lay readers of our diocese and parish. Give them your grace to fulfill their high calling. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who provide us with the necessities of life, for farmers and fishers, and all who work with them to bring the bounty of the earth and seas to our homes, and for all who provide essential goods and services, that they might find joy and satisfaction in their work and be fairly rewarded for their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who travel for work or recreation, whether by land, by sea, or in the air, that they might go in your care to their destinations and return home in safety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who suffer because of war, poverty, hunger, homelessness, and persecution, with special remembrance of the people of Ukraine. We pray, too, for those whose lives have been lost or affected by natural disasters in Canada and around the world. We pray for those affected by COVID-19 and other life-threatening diseases, those ministering to the sick and the dying. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the indigenous peoples of our nation, for healing and reconciliation, especially as they and we mourn the loss of their children, their culture, and their traditional lands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal Spirit, the spirit of joy and health, we pray for families and individuals created in your image. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, Sue, Nathan, and David. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the living and the dead, we remember all those who have departed this life in your faith and fear, especially William McLaren, praying that, rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow the good example of all the saints, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew the Apostle, and St. John the Baptist, our patrons, and Crispin, Crispinian, Ched, Alfred, St. Simon, and St. Jude the Apostles, and James Hannington, whom we remember this week, that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer, prayer and grant us your peace. peace. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our closing prayers. O Lord Jesus Christ, grant that we may be among the number of those who at the last shall bear in their hands the palms of victory, when every knee shall bow before thee, and every tongue confess that thou art the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Father, we thank you that we need never walk in darkness, because you are leading us and showing us the way, step by step. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost, Ghost be with, with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. May you have a blessed, happy, and healthy week. Hope to see you this time next Sunday. To request weekly transcripts of each service in advance, email allsaints at nb.aibn.com.